In video number 141 we tested SD cards on a Raspberry Pi. It became quite clear that SD cards do not live forever, especially not in database or logging applications. Today we will try to solve this issue without spending a lot of money. And maybe we even will gain some speed. Recycling of old hard disks is the name of the game. Will we succeed and what is the speed of these old disks on our Raspberry? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. This video answers the following questions. What do we have to do to boot our Raspberry from a hard disk instead of an SD card? Which hard disks are usable for this purpose? Which interface cables are needed for which hard disk types? How do these disks perform? We will test a 2.5 inch Hitachi mechanical disk age 8 years, a 2.5 inch OCC SSD age 4 years, a Western Digital 5.25 inch mechanical disk age 10 years, a King Dian 1.8 inch SSD age new. First the good news. From Raspbian and Chession it is very easy to boot from a USB drive instead of the SD card. You find the link for all commands in the description. We boot our Raspberry with an SD card with the Raspbian installed and bring it up to date. sudo apt get update and upgrade. Then we issue the following command. This adds the line program underscore USB underscore boot mode equals 1 to the end of the config.txt file. Reboot the Raspberry Pi with sudo reboot now and check the result with this command. If it shows these numbers, the magic has happened and your Raspberry is ready to boot from a USB drive. Shut down and remove the power from your Raspberry. Remove the SD card, plug in the USB disk with a valid image and your Raspberry will boot from the USB disk plugged in any USB connector. You can prepare the USB disk on your PC exactly as you prepare your normal SD cards. You can use Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager to do that. And it is not necessary to use Raspbian as an operating system on the hard disk. You can use your preferred OS, as you did with the SD cards. After powering up, the Raspi takes a few seconds until it shows the rainbow colors and starts the normal boot. Because the image on the hard disk is completely new, the first time it expands the file system and you have to do all your setup steps like naming of your device, change keyboard and language, and enable SSH if you wish. Now your Raspi is ready and you never need an SD card again. Please keep in mind, the SD card slot has always boot priority 1. This means if you insert an SD card, it will boot from there even if you have your hard disk connected. Most of us have a history of old PCs. If you are lucky, you did not throw all these disks away. I still have a few laying around. We will use these for our tests. And we will need a cable to connect these disks to the USB connectors. When I changed my mechanical drive to an SSD, I got this cable in the kit. It is USB 3 to SATA. Because I read that raspberries cannot deliver enough current to drive USB hard disks, I ordered also this USB 2 cable. It has two USB and one SATA plug. Then I also ordered this nice USB case. Internally it has a SATA connector and on the outside a USB 3 connector and you can mount any 2.5 inch SATA disk into the case. And last but not least, I still have my Orico hard disk bay. It can host either 2.5 or 5.25 inch disks and was reviewed in video number 8. So let's start our tests with a simple cable. I connect it to the Raspberry, insert the USB power monitor, connect the mechanical drive and power up the Raspberry. Nothing happens. At the beginning, this drive spins up, it splatters and the Raspberry cannot source this current. Later, the power hunger is smaller, but it seems to be too late. The only drive which works with this cable is the small King Dian 1.8 inch drive. So we need a different solution for the other disks. One with more power. This is the strength of the next cable. It has two USB plugs. One can be plugged into the Raspi and the second to a USB power adapter. 
Unfortunately, I had no big success with this cable at all. It might work in other scenarios and probably would also work if the Raspberry would have a reset button. Because the 5V wires from both USB connectors are connected, the Raspi is backpowered even if its real power cord is not plugged in. So it is hard to boot and this concept was very unreliable. I cut the main USB connector off and replaced it with a new one. This time I connected the 5V wire from SATA to the one USB connector, but not to the Raspi connector. Like that I can power the disk without backpowering the Raspi. With this modification, this cable can be used for all disks except the 5.25 inch drive. This drive needs 12V in addition to 5V. Fortunately, I have this Orico hard disk bay which can be used for such purposes. But unfortunately, the Raspi does not boot with this bay. Even if I insert the OCC disk, which works very well with the 3 plug cable, it does not boot. I do not know if this is an incompatibility between the USB 2 of the Raspi and the USB 3 of the Orico. You can buy other USB to SATA cables with 12V supply. But I have no one here. Maybe a viewer can help out with his experience. The tests with a nice transparent box did not work. Also here we would need a custom made Y cable to separately power the disk. And also here we might have to modify it for the Raspberry. After these initial tests I think the modified 3 plug cable is the solution to go. It runs with all disks except the big 5.25 inch one. Maybe somebody knows a link to a cable with the modification already built in? Now we can go on with the speed tests. In order to be comparable with the SD card test I use the same procedures. If you are interested in this matter you can watch video number 141. The results are very promising. All these USB disks are much faster than any of the SD cards. Sequential write operations are easily 10 times faster on the Raspi. The only problematic area is the sequential read performance of the mechanical drive. As expected it is quite slow in this discipline. The random write is slow for the mechanical and for the small King Dian SSD. But the performance of both disks is comparable with the SD cards. Here the OCC SSD is the king. Maybe you never heard of this King Dian SSD. It is a special device for small computers like the Raspberry. I did not find a lot of information about it and I'm not sure if its lifetime is different from the SD cards. If we compare the speeds with other SD cards, we see that they used a different technology or have more parallel chips. The sequential write speed is 4 times faster than the fastest 16 GB SD card and the read speed still is nearly 100% faster. The random speeds are comparable. Again, maybe a viewer knows more about the technology used in these devices. Summarized, it is very easy to boot from a USB drive instead of the SD card slot. Powering the USB drives is a little challenging, but we found a simple and cheap solution which worked with most of the drives. I was not able to make a mechanical 5.25 inch disc work. Maybe other adapters would help. A 2.5 inch USB disk in a case did not work. Also here we need a Y cable, maybe also a modified one. The speed of all these USB disks are faster than the average SD cards. The lifetime of PC disks is well known and for sure long enough at the data volumes handled by a Raspberry. The only question mark here is the King Dian SSD because I have no information about the technology used here. If you have an old disk laying around, it is for sure a good idea to convert it to a boot device of your home automation server, even if it uses little more energy than an SD card. If you have no such drive, maybe you find an old laptop somewhere. All 2.5 inch disks should be ok, even the smallest. If physical space is an issue, the King Dian drive is a good solution. For sure much faster than no name SD cards and not much more expensive. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.